Junk DNA, or pseudogenes, that is, genes without any apparent phenotypic expression, has long been a talking point for atheists, who have used its supposed preponderance in the human genome to argue against intelligent design and for random mutation and unguided evolution. Here are some fairly recent quotes from some very well-known atheists. From Dawkins, Pseudogenes are genes that once did something useful but have now been sidelined and are never transcribed or translated. What pseudogenes are useful for is embarrassing creationists, since it's a remarkable fact that the greater part, 95% in the case of humans, of the genome might as well not be there for all the difference it makes. This is a quote from Michael Shermer. We have to wonder why the intelligent designer added to our genome junk DNA, repeated copies of useless DNA, orphan genes, gene fragments, tandem repeats, and pseudogenes, none of which are involved directly in the making of a human being. In fact, of the entire human genome, it appears that only a tiny percentage is actively involved in useful protein production. Rather than being intelligently designed, the human genome looks more and more like a mosaic of mutations, fragment copies, borrowed sequences, and discarded strings of DNA that were jerry-belt over millions of years of evolution. Finally, a quote from Jerry Coyne. Perfect design would truly be the sign of a skilled and intelligent designer. Imperfect design is the mark of evolution. We expect to find, in the genomes of many species, silenced or dead genes. Genes that once were useful but are no longer intact or expressed. The evolutionary prediction that we'll find pseudogenes has been fulfilled amply. Our genome, and that of other species, are truly well-populated graveyards of dead genes. Well, it turns out junk DNA isn't such junk after all. Here's the abstract of an article from a 2012 edition of the journal Science. This week, 30 research papers, including 6 in Nature and additional papers published online by Science, sound a death knell for the idea that our DNA is mostly littered with useless bases. A decade-long project, the Encyclopedia of DNA Elements, ENCODE, has found that 80% of the human genome serves some purpose, biochemically speaking. Beyond defining proteins, the DNA bases highlighted by ENCODE specify landing spots for proteins that influence gene activity, strands of RNA with myriad roles, or simply places where chemical modifications serve to silence stretches of our chromosomes. Fast forward six years, and what was once thought to be junk DNA is now a thriving area of research. This from Princeton. Researchers have captured video showing how pieces of DNA once thought to be useless can act as on-off switches for genes. These pieces of DNA are part of over 90% of the genetic material that are not genes. Researchers now know that this junk DNA contains most of the information that can turn on or off genes. And in a recent volume of Chromosome Research, guest editor Peter A. Larson is emphatic on this point. There is no such thing as junk DNA. Indeed, a suite of discoveries made over the past few decades have put to rest this misnomer and have identified many important roles that so-called junk DNA provides to both genome structure and function. Much as an atheistic materialistic bias compelled many scientists to resist Big Bang cosmology and cling to the steady-state model of the 19th century, Dawkins, Shermer, Coyne, and others who use junk DNA as evidence for their atheism have an ideological reason to resist the design implications of a wholly functional genome. Not only is a materialistic worldview in no way supported by scientific discovery, an atheistic materialistic prejudice can very well stymie scientific progress. Sources are provided in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.